nowhere, Ohio is in the belly of the beast. In it, we inherit the duty to fight the Zionist machine wherever we are. And it starts in our communities and it starts on our campuses. We start with educating ourselves for the over 100 years of Zionist attack on the Palestinian people with the United States active collaboration. We start with identifying how our universities are invested in genocide, and we start with divestment. To those only bearing witness, this is your opportunity to fight for a free world that our school claims to champion. There has never been a time, nor will there be a time to stay neutral, to stop by calling for peace alone. There is no neutral and ethnic cleansing. There is no peace on stolen land. Coming up on one year of the accelerated genocide in Gaza, what can we scream if not free, free Palestine? Free, free Palestine! person buried beneath the rubble of a 2,000 pound bomb that's been supplied by the United States. Do we need any other words? No. Do we need any other words to talk about the suffering that's happening in Lebanon as this genocidal war expands? No. Do we need any other words to talk about the sheer injustice that is going on even as there's a political campaign that talks about joy and that talks about all the great things, right, and fighting fascism, when both parties are falling over each other to show their support for Israel and for genocide while talking about ceasefire. So the hypocrisy is so deep, and I'm not talking about, you know, who you should vote for and all that. You go ahead and do what you need to do. But both of them are supporting genocide, right? Both of them are supporting genocide, and that's a fact that we shouldn't let be diluted yes. because we also care about other issues in the world and all that stuff. Never let that be diluted. Right? Yeah. We're going to have to fight against genocide regardless of who is, who's elected because it's going to continue as it has continued for so many years. So the rage that we feel is justified. So people may say, oh, you should sit down and talk. We've done that. People say, oh, you should have a vigil. We've done that. People say, well, you should have communication and you should, you know, you know sit down with the administrators. We've done that. And if it helps us, we will continue to do that. But keep that space for rage. And this is where I'm talking about taking space. This is very important what you're doing here right now. Imagine what people in Gaza and West Bank would feel if there weren't these kind of demonstrations around the world. It would look like we're agreeing with our government when it funds genocide. So it's important for people to see this. It's important for the people around you to see this. It's important for people who are on the fence for some reason. But it's important for them to see this. And it's important for us to talk to each other too. So we can, these spaces at universities, in state houses, in public spaces, these spaces are really crucial. They're not going to end the bombing by themselves. We've been out here for the year and the bombing hasn't stopped. They're not going to end the bombing by themselves. But they become the places where we meet other people who are going to be lifelong organizers for justice, for the end of apartheid, for the end of settler colonialism, for the end of genocide. Yeah. So, 